In this video, we're going to talk with John from Hog Holsters and try to answer some questions that I've got, and so I thought maybe you might have about the um, about the process involved in in legally obtaining a silencer or suppressor or you know short barrel rifle or any of those NFA type items. And because as it turns out, I didn't know this about John. I was telling him that I, I was, that was something I wanted to talk to somebody about when I get to the shot show, and he was like, you know what? Um, I could probably help you. So I thought, wait, let me just put it on camera. And we'll, we'll, um, we'll, maybe it'll help you too. And we'll also we'll talk a little bit about the uh, National Hearing Protection Act that's been floating around Congress for a couple of years. So anyway, that's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me. And John Abbott from Hog Holsters here. And... We've been hanging out here in, in the hotel, John's hotel room all night, so our voices are probably gone. We're really tired. I was, I re literally had the camera off the tripod, ready to go back to my room, and I happened to mention to him that I was going to try to find somebody, you know, that could, that could maybe give me some information about getting a silencer or NFA type items. And he said, "Well, you know what? I've, I've got at least one or two myself. So, and I've been doing it for, you know, several years. So I could probably tell, you know, maybe answer some of your questions. So I thought, hold the fort. Let me get the camera set back up." And maybe it'll, it'll help you too if you're interested in that. So anyway, John, that was a long introduction, but thanks, thanks for um for taking the time. I know we're you're tired. I'm tired. Not a problem. Try to do it. <clears throat> Tell you what, um, shooting suppressed is something that once you do it, you're hooked. I guarantee that. A friend of mine told me a long time ago. He goes, if I let you shoot this, it'll ruin you. And he was right. I, I love shooting. I love shooting suppressed. Uh, they don't really silence it, but now I think the ATF wants them to be called silencers. Um, but uh, the National Firearms Act uh, makes it where certain firearms, you know, you have to go through a really long and lengthy process to, to get them. And uh, so let's let's talk about acquiring a silencer. Um, if you want to acquire a silencer, the first thing you need to do is make sure that it's legal in the state in which you reside. So if you live in you, most states, I think it's 40 some going off memory, uh, 40 some allow you to own silencers. Now, not all of those 40 allow you to hunt with them but they can definitely target shoot with them. Um, so once I found out that I lived in a state where silencers were, were, were legal and welcome, um, I decided to go about the process of acquiring some. So what you need to know is that there are stores that carry them. So you go to the store that carries them and you, you decide which one. You can research it, decide which one you want. Um, and uh, you, want to buy, you want to buy the silencer. So what you have to do is um, you, you, there's a couple of different ways. One is you can form a trust, which you go to the silencer store. The store that's selling it will normally help you with that. You can form a trust. It normally costs about $100 to form a trust. Now, let me, let me explain why a person might want to form a right. trust. That's where some of the confusion, I think, has come about. I'm interested okay. in. Um, if, you, if you form a trust, um, there are people that are in the trust that are considered responsible persons. A responsible person is someone who... Uh, in the trust would be um, allowed to own uh, or have possession of that silencer uh, or suppressor or other class three items such as a, a machine gun or a short barreled rifle, short barreled shotgun. If you're not doing it with the trust, you just go in there and say, I want to buy it. They say, what's your name? You say, you know, John Abbott, and you fill out all the paperwork. You get a photograph taken, you get fingerprints, you have to send a copy. They print out the print out all the information, and you you get a check uh, or money order for two hundred dollars, payable to the uh, National Firearms Act um, division of the Alcohol Tobacco Bureau of Alcohol Tobacco Firearms and Explosives, and they send that in uh, along with your fingerprints. Now there's a copy of this documentation that you sent must send to your local law enforcement. Now they they used to have to you have to go to the sheriff and get a signature. Um, now they no longer require that. You just send them documentation if you're in a legal area that, hey, I'm getting a suppressor or I'm trying to buy a suppressor. So you send this off and, and you, you, you fill out the documentation. It's signed. You pay the $200 tax stamp. And if it doesn't go through because you're a miscreant or whatever, they give you your $200 back. Um, so it's, it's mailed off. And then you wait. And when you wait, and, and you wait a little bit more, 
Uh, my last one, um, I can tell you the last uh, suppressor that I that I got. Um, I sent the documentation off on December the 22nd, 2017. Um, it came back on June the 15th of 2018. When my when my so stamp came about back. six months. That was that was how long it took for me to get my last one. Then um, it has taken as long as nine months. It, and, and your mileage may vary, but that was with the trust, and I was a responsible person. Now. If you, on your trust, you want to have other people, um, like let's say a father and a son. Well, if a father and a son or a father and a couple of brothers or whatever want to buy a firearm, everyone on the trust has to be above 18 and has to have a clean record. And they must be fingerprinted. They must be photographed. But the documentation is the same. But all of that goes in, in a trust, along with a copy of the trust. Now, once you get your first fire, your first NFA firearm, and a silencer is considered a firearm uh, on the paperwork, um, what happens is whenever you send in for another one, you have to send in a list of what your trust owns. All the, the other suppressors or silencers that you own that are in that trust goes in with each documentation quiz. I want to tell you, once you buy one suppressor, you're probably going to buy this. So that's why. So if you buy as an individual, then you, you just feel the same paperwork. You got to send your fingerprints in every single time, right? Uh, every single time, every single suppressor, this this is over again. When you buy another one, it's the same process. Fill out the paperwork, pay the $200. Now, I want you to understand that $200 is a one-time fee. It's not every year you pay $200. So, But even if you have a trust, everybody in the trust has to send their, their fingerprints in every time. Every time you buy a new item for that trust, everybody that is on that trust has to send in their fingerprints and a photo. So what's the advantage? Because I've, I've heard there's advantages to buying it through a trust. So what's the advantage to, to buying it through a trust? Okay, the advantage to buying it through a trust is this. People that don't own that suppressor shouldn't be using that suppressor. Okay? Um, so let's say you got uh, two brothers and... Um, they own one suppressor well if it's owned by joe then joe's the only person that can use that suppressor if it's if it's in a trust and it's owned by joe and fred the brothers joe and or fred can take that can use that suppressor so they don't have to be together at that point anybody no. in the trust can, can anybody that's a it. responsible person in the trust okay also the other reason for a trust is this Let's unfortunate things happen. You know, uh, the guy that owns it, the guy, the guy goes and buys it. You know, uh, Jimmy goes and buys a suppressor. It's in Jimmy's name, and Jimmy has a catastrophic thing where he's he, he, he he's, passes, dead. He's, he's dead. He's dead. What happens? Well, there's not a line of of because uh, in a trust there's someone you name as a benefactor. Right, right. And uh, the benefactor needs to be legal to own that. Um, there is a there's a, there's a line of where that goes. So I I. The ones I own are all in a trust. It just, it, it's a lot better. Even the ATF likes it better from what they've told yeah. me when it's in a trust because then they know who can get it and it's not in limbo and it can't really get right. lost and there's always a responsible person for it. Now, one, this is very, very important. Right now, you may have a gun safe in your home, okay? And which, which you should. If you've got a bunch of guns, you should have a gun safe. Let's say that you you're... Your wife knows your gun combination. The way I understand the law, again, this is not legal advice. It's not illegal advice, but <laughs> okay. If your wife isn't on your trust and she knows the combination to your gun set and can open it, and there's a suppressor in there, a silencer in there, a class three item, you have allowed someone who is not a responsible person to have access to a class three item. That's a no-no. So it would need to be inside of the safe, inside of the safe, which no one can open except the responsible person. So you must keep those things where irresponsible people cannot get a hold of them. Yeah. So bottom line, your advice would be go ahead and I mean, at my local gun store, I saw a sign. They'll, they'll do a trust. I mean, it's it's pretty much you don't have to go to an attorney and deal with all that stuff. No, it's so already they're, they're pre form. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's a pretty simple process from my understanding, but. But I, that's just my assumption from reading the signs on the law, right? So, but everybody I've talked to pretty much suggests exactly what you said. Just do the trust and, and put any your your whole family owner, whoever you think might be, 
Might who, be. Who, who, whoever you think is responsible. Right, right. Like if you've got, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Right. If you've got somebody that's always getting DUIs, um, yeah, yeah. you know, doing stuff like that, don't, they're not responsible. You know, don't put them on your trust. Because the thing of it is, they come in and say, wait a minute, you got somebody on your trust that's not responsible. There's a good possibility they can confiscate your firearm. And you're, you're uh, in everything in that truck. Or at a minimum, just turn down your application, right? Well, they will turn down your application. Yeah. If you send it in with, with Crazy Cousin Eddie, with the RV out front, with, with, with the toilet full, you know, it's, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. Uh, you know, be very care careful who you pick to put on your trust. And uh, if you don't trust them with your ATM card, I wouldn't put them on my trust. Okay. So, and I, I, if you don't know the answer to this, it's fine. But my assumption is, my understanding is that the same the same basic rules apply to all NFA class five class three items, which is a, a short barrel rifle. Probably the second most popular thing people are interested in right now. Although with AR pistols, that's kind of maybe getting a little less less great. And then machine gun, which is any fully automatic rifle or uh, weapon. Any fully uh, transferable fully automatic weapon, which was made prior to 1986. Yeah. Use them in there. Um, a lot of people have trouble with the uh, with, with, with understanding simple yeah. English of shall not be infringed. Yeah, I know. And the reality is, for most of us, a fully automatic weapon made before 1986 is the only ones that are legal. It's going to be very, very expensive, my understanding. Because cause it's just, there's only so, they're rare. They can't, the ones we're making now can only be sold to law enforcement, right? Right, law enforcement or dealers. Okay. So, yeah. bottom line, you know, people have, get, have got those know what they're worth. Yep. So, I, I mean, I like it. I think I got a price. I talked to somebody a couple of years ago, just a regular M16 that they made a lot of. Like, I don't know. Five or six grand or more, oh, just, you know, more like sixteen. Grand. Oh yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Like 16. A car. So and then you know you wind up not using the full auto anyway if you want to hit anything. So yeah. Um, well, I think that's answered a lot of my questions. Hopefully, it's answered a lot of yours. I think um, real quickly, I said we're going to talk about this um, because it is a very popular topic right now. And for the last couple of years, the uh, Congress has been dragging their stinking lazy feet on. The National Hearing Protection Act, which has is, is, is been an attempt to de, de NFA, if you will, if that's, if that's the correct term, to take the silencers out of the NFA, right? To take silencers out of the National Firearms Act. Yeah. So make them just a, like right. they used to not be. I never knew this. By the way, if, if you haven't read the book, um, um, what is uh, Unintended, Unintended Consequences, Consequences by John Ross. If you haven't read it, I, I didn't, before the NFA, silencers were like five bucks or so. You could buy them anywhere. They're not regulated in Europe. I didn't know that. Are you can buy them in Europe. You can even buy them in England. So I mean, you can buy them in England. You can even buy a knife in England. Come on, people. You know, anyway, um, I, I digress because I'm getting around. I'm a little, I'm a little upset with our Congress for, for dragging their feet on some issues in the last couple of years when they really could have got something done. So, yep. um, but you had some thoughts about the National Hearing Protection Act. Yes. Um, let's say it's going to pass. Let's say let's say they're going to get it passed. Let's say something magic happens. Let's say Trump is reelected in 2020 with a massive majority of, of people in the House and a massive majority of people in the Senate because the economy is just doing great. Let's just say that, okay? Uh, and uh, and let's say in 2020 that the uh, Hearing Protection Act is the first bill put on his desk and he signs it right after Inauguration Day in 2021. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Okay, wonderful. All right. Well, let's just talk about the truth. The truth of the matter is, if I was waiting on the Hearing Protection Act to pass, I wouldn't have any suppressors. I wouldn't have any silencers. In fact, if they had thought, thought it was going to pass, everybody thinks it's going to pass right away. Well, I got news for you. If it does pass, what's going to happen? Suppressors are going to go way down in price, right? And way up in demand. You're not going to have to pay the $200. So right off the bat, you're paying $200. Well, you're saving that $200 that you spend on four tanks of gas. Guys, ladies, if you want a suppressor, if you want a silencer, do what I did. Go to your local gun store. Walk in there. Said, hey, I need a trust. Why do you want a trust? I want a suppressor because I got news for you. Congress is dragging their feet. That means you don't have to. Get your butt in there and buy you a suppressor. You will never, ever regret it. Um, go in there. I mean, I've had my suppressor now for since June of last year, the one that I bought when everybody else was waiting for the Hearing, Hearing Protection Act to pass. And all these, these suppressor companies, they've got the stuff out there. They've been making them. They hope it passes, but y'all waiting for it to pass or waiting on your suppressors. All that hearing damage you're doing to yourself. 
You're not protecting your hearing now. Guess what? You don't have to wait for the government to tell you that, hey, it's okay for you now to protect your hearing without paying $200. Go pay the $200. Buy the suppressor. Wait the six, seven months till it comes in, and you'll be happy. I know I'm happy. I love shooting suppressed. It's the most enjoyable way to shoot. It's on my list. So, John, thanks again for um, I'm staying up so late and, and putting the camera back on to, to, to take a minute to give us your your actual hands-on experience with, with you know how, how the process works because uh, you answer some of my questions and really it's, it's just good to know from somebody that's actually done it not some theoretical dude that's just one, not one of those internet experts so um so anyway and i hope this has been helpful to you um i can tell you that i had the, the privilege the opportunity or, or pleasure of shooting some suppressed stuff at range day at shot show last year and it is just amazing it, it's um it actually helps helps with it also helps with the recoil a pretty good bit um some oh, yeah. some stuff i mean it's just and especially if you're shooting like 22s and stuff it really is quiet you don't have to wear any any really hearing protection with, with smaller caliber stuff um so anyway i hope it's been helpful um and i gotta throw a little plug in for hog holsters um hog holsters makes the concealed carry holster that i wear every day and i highly encourage you i think it's the best holster that i've ever tried and you can save 10 percent on any any purchase over $30 at Hog Holsters by using the, the coupon code SURVIVAL on purpose. I told you it's been a long day and we are tired. It has been and, a long day. So um, anyway, um, I encourage you to go there. There'll be a link in the description below. I really appreciate you watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, my name is Brian. You are watching Survival on Purpose. Survival's not an accident. So be prepared. I'll see you next time.